Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Bernoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, we had a very nice time with the small group there that showed up here in Orlando. I know it was last minute, little mini conference. And we're considering doing that again on our way home, possibly around the Atlanta area. Uh, another little mini conference there. It'll be last minute. So if you are interested, at least go ahead and email me now. I, we're, I'm not saying 100% we can do it. I have to see if there's any little venue that we could do this in. But uh, it would be um, IsraeliNewsLive at gmail.com. That way we can get an idea of how many people would be able to make it. Uh, because it tends to be a little pricey regardless in doing it. Uh, you know, it could cost anywhere from 500 to to $1,000 to rent a little small conference room for just an afternoon. But uh, we may try to do that on the way home. I think these little mini conferences are very nice. I spoke about the JFK assassination, which will not, I will not be making that information public as of right now. Uh, there's reasons for that, as I'm sure you could appreciate. Uh, but I uh, also went into things that, well, we shared some of it there with you guys. There, there's some other things I haven't shared as of yet. Maybe I could. I'll have to kind of look, go back and review what's on the videos there. Uh, but the DNA, uh, the, the project that we've been asked about on the DNA uh, of, uh, DNA alter, uh, uh, what do you call that? DNA manipulation. There we go. DNA manipulation. So <clears throat> I may go into some of that uh, in, in other venues as well, because there's so much information that I still have not disseminated yet. But at that meeting, this subject was brought up to me from the bostonherald.com. Uh, Kamala Harris, the Supreme Court, would open the VP door for Hillary Clinton. And <clears throat> Peter Lucas wrote this on January the 27th, just a few days ago, uh, and suggests that Joe Biden could save his presidency by doing that very thing. You know, put... Have uh, Stephen Breyer, who's 82, step down, retire, do something, get out of the office there, put Kamala in his place, uh, and replace her with Hillary Clinton. Well, I was asked, did I know anything about it? And I'm like, no, nope, don't know anything about that. I said, but I, I could ask. I mean, who knows? Just ask. You never know. Maybe, there, maybe something is going on. Because after all, I hear about the spats and the fights that go on between these two women at the White House. Because I have a friend that actually is right down the hallway from where some of these spats have gone on at the White House. So yes, I do get to hear a lot of very interesting things. Well, then the friends that were there at the meeting, they shared with me, let's see, right actually here, this particular video here of Gerald Ford talking about how a woman would become president of the United States. So I want to play this little clip for you, and then I'm going to tell you what happened today. Let's listen in on the role of former presidents in American society, sponsored by the Herbert Hoover Library and Museum and the Gerald Ford Library and Museum. Here's how these students took advantage of a rare learning opportunity. Um, Mr. President, why did you um, pardon President Nixon? I'm glad you asked that question. It's a good question. Uh, when I became president, uh, we're we're going to skip past that one right there. I actually had seen another video, and I didn't know that that, that part was in there. Love to know what he says about pardoning <laughs> Richard Nixon. But, you know, uh, quite frankly, well, I won't get into that. That's a different story there. Uh, I'd like, though, to get the one about the little girl that asked him about a woman becoming president of the United States. So let's see if we can find that one right there, because um, that one is very interesting. Uh, oh, wait a minute. All right, it's not this one. Let me back up then. Uh, must have been the other video. This one right here. Oh, yeah, that one's only about the Nixon one there. So, okay, let's... For the 38th president let's of the move United forward States. here. Here we go. And watch the little girl. It's kind of strange. The little girl in this video, too, that, that asked the president the question actually looks a little bit like Hillary Clinton when she was small. Let's listen in. Here at the Hoover facilities. Mr. Ford... What advice would you give a young lady wanting to become president of the United States? <laughs> well, I hope we do have a young lady at some point become president of the United States. Uh, I can tell you how I think it will happen, because it won't happen in the uh, normal course of events. Either the 
Republican or Democrat political party will nominate a man for president and a woman for vice president. And the woman and man will win. So you'll end up with a, a president, a male, and a vice president, a female. And in that term of office of the president, the president will die. And the woman will become president under the law or constitution. And once that barrier is broken, from then on, men better be careful. <laughs> because they'll have a hard, hard time ever even getting a nomination in the future. But that's the way it's going to happen, and I uh, think it'll probably come sometime in the next uh, four or eight years. And if that little girl doesn't look like Hillary Clinton when she was young, I don't know, I don't know who does. So it's fascinating to me uh, to see that clip back in 1989. Well... So the question, though, came up to me, as I said, you know, is there any truth to this? Could this actually possibly be happening? So I sent a message to the friend of mine that actually works at the White House, and he responded. I said, is it true that Kamala may become Chief Justice and Hillary Rodham Clinton become VP? He wrote me back, they are still talking. That blew me away. They're still talking. So it is a very serious discussion. And no doubt, Mr. Peter Lucas was probably given permission to publish it, but he had to publish it in a way of a suggestion. And I already know there's a lot of tension right now between those at the White House and Kamala Harris. So Kamala of course, as it is brought out even in this article here, could, Biden could fulfill his desire to put the first black woman ever as a uh, uh, chief justice nominee and become, uh, become that. And at the same time, Hillary Clinton becomes vice president and the talks are being negotiated. So it wouldn't be as a, if, a, if it would be a guarantee Hillary would be brought in as vice president and you don't even need uh, the president to pass away. She might decide to exercise the 25th Amendment and have Biden thrown out for dementia. Uh, or he could pass away. I would think it'd be more the other way around. But isn't it interesting that Gerald Ford spoke about this in such an Office assertive president. way? Such an assertive way. I thought that was fascinating. Stephen Bernoon here with Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening to the broadcast. Thank you for your support for this ministry. And again, don't forget to write us, Israeli News Live uh, at gmail.com, if you would be interested in attending. And, and please, definitely let us know. Uh, I do know that some people were unable to make the meeting here in Orlando uh, due to circumstances beyond their control as well. Uh, but if you really could make it, because a lot of times... Uh, we are limited on seating, and we may get more requests than what we are, are able to fill. So when you're doing it last minute, uh, if you're able to make it, that would be wonderful. We'd love to be able to meet you, but I need to kind of get an idea of how many people would be able to come. Now, as of right now, and let me just say this too, because we're, we're on a Monday, um, it would more than likely be Thursday, like a Thursday evening, something like that. So uh, we would probably do like a four-hour type of meeting, would not be super long, something like that little mini, I call it a mini conference there, could be as much as five hours, but uh, something like that. So maybe around 4 p.m. to say 9 p.m., depending on if we can get a hotel to accommodate us for that. Anyway, Stephen Benoit with Israeli News Live. Good evening. Thank you for listening, and God bless you.